right, folks, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss the difference between 50 amp RV receptacles and 30 amp RV receptacles. This is commonly a misunderstood situation here, but I'm going to make it very basic and explain the way that the posts are set up and the way that they should be wired in both the four wire 50 amp configuration as well as the 30 amp three wire configuration, which we'll take a look at in a minute. So in order to do these tests to check for good power and correct polarity, you will need a basic voltage meter that can measure AC voltage and preferably up to 300 volts. It doesn't have to be a fancy one like this, but if you've got one, that's even better. So what I'd like to talk about is the position of these pins. If you're wiring a plug for the first time and you just bought an RV and you want to put 50 amp service out at your garage, you should probably know which wires to hook where in this plug. So if we take a look at the pins, number one, the what I call a round pin at the top, this should be a ground circuit, which is bonded inside of your service panel. If we take a look to the left, this is a 110 volt 50 amp circuit. If we take a look at the bottom slot, this is a bonded neutral circuit. And the right slot is also a 50 amp 110 volt circuit so we have a hundred amps of available power here and basically what they do is these are not bonded inside of the RV these two 110 volt 50 amp legs they service each side of the service panel which allows us to have basically two 50 amp RVs combined into one it allows for a lot of appliances and amperage to be used in one unit such as a large bus or fifth wheel so when you're measure, measuring voltage at these circuits, you should be putting your red lead in the what we call hot legs and your negative lead into the neutral and the ground sockets. Neutral here, ground here, and you should be reading 110 volts from each of these locations. If you put your meter across your two hot legs, like this, Let's see if I can do this one-handed here. Across the two hot legs of 110 volt 50 amp service, your meter should read between 208 and 250 volts. This is normal, folks, but it's important to understand that when you see this reading, these two circuits are not bonded anywhere inside of the RV due to the split bus bar in the RV's breaker box. Therefore, an RV is not a 220 volt appliance or unit and should not be viewed as such. They are two legs of 110 volt service servicing two separate sides of the RV's panel. Next, let's take a look at a 30 amp RV receptacle. You can see it looks much different, and it is much different. In this case, I spoke about the term legs or hot legs. No, we're not talking about a swimsuit model here. We're talking about the electricity traveling on a hot wire. In a 30 amp plug, you only have one hot leg providing 30 amps of 110 volt service. These plugs should be wired with the round upper pin as ground, one 110 volt 30 amp dedicated leg, and one neutral bonded circuit in the box. This provides you 30 amps of AC power on a single leg and feeds the entire breaker box inside the RV. This can be seen in more detail in my 30 amp power distribution video where we disassemble a breaker box in a 30 amp RV and take a look at the guts. In this configuration, if I were to put my lead in the ground pin and put my red lead in the hot leg, I should get 110 volts plus or minus. I should also be able to remove my ground plug and put it into the neutral pin and receive 110 positive AC volts as well. Not only does this prove that the circuit is working and have the correct voltage, but it also proves polarity 
and neutral ground bonding in my service panel. Many RVers make this mistake of identifying this as a 220 volt plug and wire a hot leg and a hot leg here and then put a ground. What this will do is send 110 volts through your neutral circuit into all of your appliances, breaker box, converter, etc. inside of the RV and you will need to come and see somebody like me at $150 an hour. It is a very expensive mistake that I would like to help you avoid. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a, a uh, comment below. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you, and I'll have plenty more to come. Take care, folks.